thing I did was actually adding some better looking assets to it and this is the result. See you next time. What's up? Benvenuti or bentornati everybody to my channel. My name is Peter and thank you for tuning in once again to the fifth episode of the last day of summer's devlog. The first thing I want to say is thank you so much because since the last time we probably spoke I think we surpassed 1000 subscribers. Yeah, and that's amazing and I'm very humbled and grateful for the amazing support you've been showing under each and every video. Secondly, I want to apologize for this video taking so long to come out but I've had five exams in three weeks and I've also been very very busy playing Enter the Gungeon to the point that I've reached 50 hours in a month and now that I say it out loud, it doesn't seem that healthy. Anyway, if you like this video, please subscribe and leave a like. And now that I said that, let's get right into it. I feel that is extremely necessary for a game that has the player explorer's small handcrafted world to also have some sort of item collection system, either for lore or questing purposes. So without any further ado, let me show you how I made it. The first thing I did was to make sure I kept the backend and the frontend separated. This is because you should never want the logic of your game to be UI or scene dependent for it to work properly. So instead of using a mono behavior as other systems would, the backbone of the inventory system will be a virgin class and I'll be using a singleton to reference the current instance of the inventory. The inventory will be unordered and I'm not planning to have any stack size limit as of today to keep things simple. So I decided to store its content in a string int dictionary where the string is gonna be the item's ID and the integer is gonna be the amount that is owned at any time. Independently from the solution I choose though, I still need to actually define what an item is in the code. I'm using scriptable objects since this will allow me to create and order items in the editor, easily reference sprites and load them from the resources into an item database I was thinking about using JSON for this, but as easy as that would have been, this method is even easier to implement and look after, so I went with it. Developing a backend system without having a proper way to test it out, it's gonna be difficult though, so I actually implemented some developer cheats to help me add and remove items to and from the inventory, and it made it way easier. Also, since the game is gonna depend on the player's interaction, I also added the option to check and manipulate their inventory from the dialog system. Luckily, Yarn Spinner has a few handy tools to implement events and functions into the dialogs, so that was actually pretty straightforward. I wish I had some goofy bugs and things to show you, but the thing is that it went really pretty well and I managed not to run into any game-breaking issue this time. But if you feel the need to see me struggle and smash my head into the wall when things don't work, I've also started streaming over at twitch.tv slash watib. And yeah, we've been having some fun over there and some of you actually gave me really good input on the game. So you're always welcome to drop by and join the stream. At last, it came to the front end and this is the part I was not waiting for. I had two main ideas. The first one was to have a window pop open from below and take a small section of the screen while slightly obscuring the scene to draw the player's attention to the inventory. The second one, which is actually the one I went for in the end, is a window-based solution with a main content viewport and a second window on the side for any additional information about the selected item. The graphics are not final, of course, but I'm not in the phase where I'm too concerned about having UI look good yet. And yes, I still hated working on it. That was it! Thank you so much for watching if you made it to this point and I really hope you enjoyed the video. I will have to admit that the pause I took from making videos kinda made me forget how to make this but I'm getting back on track and from the next episode they will be a little bit longer and more comprehensive of the overall progress I made on the game. This said, as always, if you have any thoughts, feedbacks or ideas on the game and what you just saw, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section down below and if you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe and leave a like to support me and the channel. With that out of the way, as always, I've been Pizza, you've been awesome, and in case you decide to stick around, see you next time.